eye early, Chrissy. Well, she had a pretty easy route to buy the first round. Her, her only tough match after being Rittner and Shet Prost was uh, Brenda Schultz. And we saw that yesterday. She lost the first set. She was in big trouble, but she came back playing consistent tennis. And it was probably a good match for her to have. And by now, everyone knows the story of Monica Sellis trying to come back from tragedy and injury. She's also had a broken finger in December. That kept her out an additional four months. She battled a shoulder injury before that, which plagued her on and off all of last year. But the singles record, again, 9-1, and one, and just her second tournament this year. And, as we mentioned, battling the virus as well. And this is her route to this final. A little bit tougher route, Wang and Gersey. The Gersey match was a night match. It was a little cooler. That's where she caught her cold. Anka Hoover, surprisingly easy, a good German player. And Conchita Martinez, of course, that was a tough match. And this is the debut in the Family Circle Magazine Cup for Monica Sellis. Uh, somewhat surprising since she did dominate the sport before the stabbing back in 93. And uh, we asked Monica Sellis about playing the 16-year-old phenom Martina Hingis. I'm really just going to go out there, try to play my game. We played just a week ago, till yesterday, and um, just going to really try to do better and just go for my shots and and try to attack my Tina more than I did in my previous matches. Boy, and Chrissy, you could tell the hoarseness of that voice. This is the, a player that is not feeling close to 100%. Well, and I've played tournaments when you're sick, too, and every time you play a match and you're sweating, your blood pressure is going up, I mean, you're recuperating really at a slower level. And right away, Kingus moving Sellis around the court. That lifting championship played a week ago yesterday. Uh, Martina Hingis played really probably one of the best matches of her early career well the intimidation factors uh, uh, comes into play when you play Monica Sells because most of the players are still afraid of her she's had such a wonderful record Martina does, is not intimidated by anyone and the first two points to Hingis 30 love well despite not feeling well Sellis has not dropped a set this week And I think we're going to see a sharper Martina Hingis out there today. I think against Brenda, Brenda played a great match, but I think Martina was a little bit sluggish, maybe didn't take the match quite as seriously as she should have. But uh, against Monica, she's going to play heads-up tennis because she knows Monica's dangerous. And that one just wide, 30 all. And you know, Dan, if there's going to be any player with Steffi Groff out with an injury that's going to break this streak, it's going to be a Monica Sellis. Someone who knows how to win. You know, the key for Monica, she said throughout this comeback, has been to recapture the aggressiveness that she had when she was the dominant player. Well, those are the types of shots that she never used to miss. I mean, that was uh, right on top of the net. That was a second serve. Meanwhile, something <laughs> is uh, cracked up Hingis out there. A cork from a champagne bottle is what caused her to <laughs> stop in mid-serve. And that's the kind of attitude that Hingis had. She'll have a laugh or two on the course, not all serious all the time. Oh. Nice winner down the line for Sellis and we're at Deuce. Well, you know, Dan, every player has to do what's best for them. And, you know, Monica Sellis is so intense as she hits this great down the line winner but she's so intense you'll very rarely see a smile on her face martina tina hingis can laugh and she can joke she can throw a racket and she can still get her concentration back Ooh. well there are those angles that i was 
was talking about. You just seemingly impossible how she can find that spot on the court, but she has such great wrist action. As you see here, very deceptive because two-handed players, you really can't tell where they're going to hit the ball. Break point for Sellis. First game to sell us breaks Hingis to begin this final of the family. It's not like any other grapefruit you've ever had. Whoa, sweet. So if you crave a better grapefruit taste, try surprisingly sweet Ruby Red and Tangerine from Ocean Spray. The Family Circle Magazine Cup is brought to you by Columbia. Healthcare has never worked like this before. By the Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. By Hormel Pepperoni. Pep it up with Hormel Pepperoni. And by L'Oreal, because you're worth it. Well, Martina Hingis, not only the youngest number one player in the world ever, but on a 30-0 winning match streak. And Bud Collins had a chance to talk to her about that streak before the match. Already. When I go every day, I go to the press and they tell me 28, 29. This is the 30th, so it's a big number. So now I'm gonna go. And, I'm gonna go for the record. How many matches? 45. Like 45 had Steffi or? You stepped the, at the start of the season. All yeah. right. <laughs> like 50 more. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but it's gonna be a hard final. Well, Monica Sellis says. Uh, I had a statement right away in taking the first game, but there are the most consecutive wins to start out a year. An incredible 45, 10 years ago by Graf. Chrissy, you're on there. You turned in 34, 1981. Oh. Once you get on a roll, you kind of stay on it. I hope she doesn't beat my record. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be tougher to break Steffi's ra record, though, because she has the next three weeks off, and by that time, Steffi will probably be starting to play again, which would set up a great rivalry. Sellis off to a good start in her first service game, and that was really the weakness at the Lipton Championship uh, last week. Big question uh, with Monica Sellis. As I watched that match, she was very inconsistent, a lot of double faults. But my question is, uh, since she's come back the second tournament, her serve still hasn't been the same. She's not going all out and swinging freely like she used to, which brings up the, the shoulder injury. You know, she talked all last year about, you know, maybe I'll have to get surgery. It's not working out that well, but... Uh, she certainly hasn't taken that pocket of time to get surgery. Maybe she thought it was too much of a risk. But I, I, I don't think her shoulder is feeling great because she's just not serving with velocity that she did a year or two ago. Well, she developed a shoulder problem uh, at the end of 95 after the comeback, being away from the game after the tragedy in April of 93 away from the game for two and a half years and really was plagued by that on and off last year and then the latest broken fingers really thwarted her comeback efforts as well. Nice touch there and puts it away. So Sellis out to an early two love lead and Chris you had a chance to scout out Monica's game in this comeback. What, uh, what did you find? Well, the sharp angles, I don't know how she finds these angles on the court, but very acute angles. Great competitor. She's been number one. She knows how to win matches. Hard working, and again, she, what she needs to work on just is her mobility. But with the clay, I mean, they have not met on this surface yet with the clay. That's going to help her, Monica Sells more than hurt her. Ah! And that's what she must do is go for That shot was an inch out. She had the right idea, but uh, she has to try to hit through Martina Hingis and not just rally with her getting some major baseline duels because she won't be winning those points. Well, she seems to be feeling all the shots right away, and because of that virus, didn't have a chance to practice much before her match uh, yesterday no. and not much at all today. Well, she's been conserving her, her strength and her energy, and really the last two matches she's had the virus, but she's played some great tennis, beating Anka Hoover, Conchita Martinez. What she's trying to do is end the point soon because she doesn't want to be out there for three hours, and it's worked for her so far. She does not look rusty now at all after the last few matches. I, I would have said that the Lipton Championships, but now she's 
getting to look more and more like the old Monica. And she said she just did not take control early at Lipton, and uh, Kingis just jumped all over in that match. Second double fault for Hingis and uh, yet another break point for Sellis, a point away from a three love lead. And an impressive start indeed for the former number one player in the world. Out ahead, three love against the current number one. Jose Maria Olavabo. Can his miraculous comeback continue? Defending champ Scott McCarran. Will he repeat? The final round of the Freeport McDermott Classic next on NBC. Martina Hingis in a love three hole here in the early going. First set of this championship final of the Family Circle Magazine Cup. We've already scouted Monica Sellis. What about the young 16-year-old? Well, very unbelievable to have an all-court game at age 16. I can see it 24, 25. Backhand weapon, backhand down the line particularly. High confidence level, borderlining on cockiness right now. She doesn't think she can lose. Good anticipation. She has to keep Monica on the run. And that's going to happen if she starts to use a few more drop shots. I think we're going to see her starting to, to play that shot a lot more. Again, Monica broken six of the eight service games last week at the Lipton. Been having no problem here today so far. And again, last week, the score is two and one. She's already matched that many games already. And some unforced errors beginning to stack up a little bit on the side of Hingis. Yeah, we haven't seen Martina hit as many loose errors as she has this set so far. And as I said before, if anyone's going to break this streak, it will be someone like a Monica who can really hit through her and overpower her and believe that she can win. Well, that's a vintage Hinkus point right there. Move Sellis around and then pasted the win. She really kept her head low when she hit that two-handed backhand. She's not looking to see where she's going to hit the ball. She's staying down. Sell us with a couple of game points for a four love lead. This is a real challenge for Martina Hingis, and this is, she's known for her mind. She's a smart player. She knows how to make adjustments. I think we're going to see a little bit of a change of game plan here. successfully holding serve again. The lead is for love here in the opening set. And we'll remind you to go online for complete tournament coverage of the Family Circle Magazine Cup. Full tournament scores and results plus transcripts of interviews conducted with some of the finest players in the world gathered here at Hilton Head. It's all at NBC Sports. New online home, NBCSports.com. Oh, nice hustle.
Russell. She has an answer for everything today. So far, Monica's playing some sharp tennis. It's good strategy, Martina Hingis's part. She needs to, to really jolt her around the court, but uh, Monica's really moving well, and that clay can, it will enable her the few seconds that she needs to get to the ball. When she gets into position, there's no one that hits the ball better than Monica Sells. Down the line, winner. When she does get into position, that's a key. It, it really, even when she was dominating the sport, movement on the court, athletic ability really wasn't her forte. Martina thinking, well, I'm not winning from the backcourt. I'll come into the net, and even that's not working right now. Ten today, four at the Lipton. Ten in four games, that's a great percentage. Everything oh. working for Sellis. Scary, after five months, this is her second tournament back and she's playing like this. Very often the baseline players who really don't come to the net very often hit those swinging volleys. It's an easier shot rather than conventional classic volley. Backhand down the line, that's her trademark shot. Oof. There it is, the third break in this opening set and sell it out to an impressive five lovely the NBA on NBC. Tip off 530 Eastern today. Well, this looks a lot like the Monica Sellis who dominated the world in tennis years ago. The Grand Slam record speaks for itself. 102 and 10, nine titles, four Australian Opens, three French, two U.S., the only Grand Slam not on her impressive resume. Wimbledon, but she made it to the finals in 92. And I would imagine uh, she won it. Winner. First ace for Monica, and she says she is not as confident going for the big serves as she used to. Struggles with the ball toss a little bit, one of the things she's been working on. Well, I think some of that has to do with her shoulder injury. I just don't think she's completely comfortable. I, you can, she was talking about surgery all last fall, so, I mean, there still has to be something wrong with that shoulder. One more break point chance for Hingis. Really getting set for the ball well, and you just can't hit it in her power zone because you don't have a chance. Martina Hingis is not maneuvering her around the court as well as she did at Lipton. And Hingis does get on the board and offers a triumphant couple of fists in the air, but still trailing 1-5 to Monica. Monica Sellis up 5-1 in this championship final. Oh, Sellis 
up two breaks after Hingis finally won her first game on a break. In. Very close. has been on the defensive up until now, and that's why she's losing. She really has to take that away from Monica Sells, and, and whoever dictates the point and takes control, chances are they're going to win the point. teenager just 16 years old Martina Hingis doesn't hold back the emotions as you mentioned earlier Chrissy she's capable of throwing the racket in frustration but capable of pumping the fist or two and youngest to be ranked number one on the tour earn a million dollars win a Grand Slam singles title this century and win a Grand Slam doubles title that came at Wimbledon with Helena Sikova but if she won this title, she, she would not be the youngest player to win the Family Circle Cup. Do you know who that I would be? Tracy Austin. Very good. Guess. 1979. Tina Hingis, what she needs to do right now is throw in a couple more drop shots, take that mid-court ball whenever Monica can, gi can give her a mid-court ball. Mm. This has to go for her shots, but when she does get that opportunity, just bring Monica to the net because she still doesn't feel comfortable up there. Good hands. We like to call them soft hands. We did talk about that in yesterday's semifinal. Her style of play, the finesse, very soft loose. hands, great touch. Exactly, very, very loose. She doesn't hold the grip tight. She doesn't muscle the ball. She uses her racket head speed, really, to get the power. And boy, you, you're so versatile if you have soft hands, because you can hit soft, you can drop shot, you can hit hard and get the power when you need it. We really haven't seen a player like this in years. It has been a power game with Steffi. Actually, it reminds me, Martina had very good hands. All of a sudden, after a five-love lead and Hingis taking the last two games, got a break point here. Right back into this set. Deuce. opportunity for Hingis to get within a couple games. Just wide. She had her 
chance there, though. That was what she did so beautifully at lift, and she literally had Monica off the court on that one shot. This shot right here, Monica's, there's no way she can get back if she had a down-the-line shot. Just missed it. A little bit sloppy. And suddenly, these rallies have become longer, and that favors Hingis. Short angles. That's what Monica Sells is known for. That's what she can do better than any other player on the court on the tour today is hit those short angles because she has such good wrist action. Set point. Court ball. Wanted to get Monica Sells up to a position where she feels still feels very uncomfortable with. And even if the drop shot's not a winner, at least she gets Monica up there. Monica has to hit a volley. Tested after the early start by Monica. Three in a row now for Hingis after the love five hole. Well, next, join NBC Sports for the exciting conclusion of the Freeport McDermott Classic. Coming up next on NBC, Jose Maria Olathabo continuing a magnificent comeback after the foot problem he's had playing very well in New Orleans as he gets ready for the Masters. It's the PGA Tour coming up next right here on NBC. Coaching daughter combos on tour. Melanie Molitor, the only coach Martina has ever had. Got her started at age three. And is always courtside. Well, that was one example that may be soft. It was certainly not better because she really had a chance to, to cream this ball either way. But she opted to hit a soft shot. Monica just hit a winner. And that's good play. We're going to be seeing a lot of drop shots from Martina Hingis because so far that shot's been very successful against Monica. She's a smart player. She knows she has to keep using it. You mentioned smart. She is very intelligent. Thinks her way around the court despite just being 16. Well, she has great court sense, and she can think ahead two or three shots to set up a point. And nowadays, the players, and, you know, without being too critical of the Jennifers and Steffies, I mean, they just seem to hit, 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 and go for every shot. And if they're missing, they still keep going for their shots, thinking that their game's going to come back, and often it, it doesn't. Point this time, Sellis takes advantage. The fourth break of Hingis, and the first set goes to Sellis 